It's been two weeks since we got the drop of GTA 6. Now, already, it's really weird to me to just casually say like, oh, we have GTA 6 now. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. But uh, we are here now. Allegedly, we are in the presence of GTA 6 lore and discussions and it's throwing me off. Now, the trailer that we got was graphically incredibly impressive. Incredible, wildly, dare I say, impressive. Uh, I'm not gonna hit just play because they will copyright strike it because it's rock steady or rock steady, rock star, and they do that type of thing. But graphically, amazingly impressive. You can see the animal systems that were present in Red Dead 2 seem to be making a return in this game now. Foliage density, crazy high. Even off in the distances, you can see the grass is still being rendered way off over there. Water physics look really, really solid. Line of sight seems really, really good. There's even cars being rendered way off in the distance here. And in terms of total density of things, I mean, there are ships, there's yachts all over the place. There's also been a lot of discussion over all of these little details. You can see how on these like patios, they're all different. So, you know, the arrangement of chairs and furniture and... The lights being on and all that is all different. You know, up here they have a grill. These other, you know, floors don't have that. So a lot of people have been wondering, okay, are they making the interiors of all these buildings accessible? I don't think that, that all of them will be accessible. I think a lot of them will be. You know, it's probably going to be the most, I guess, enterable or explorable city that we've ever seen. But I don't think every single building will be uh, able to be entered. That would be madness. Um, already, I'm just getting giddy at the thought that like we can go and hijack yachts like this. Maybe it'll be like GTA 5 where like you can climb on it, but you can't really take it over because the captain's locked away in a separate room and he'll just pretend like you aren't there. But I, I would totally buy that you could storm onto this thing and maybe the immediate, like right after you do it, it goes to like three, four stars and it's very, very difficult to, to get in. But yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Most of the stuff they showed though, very, very graphically impressive, especially considering they've only announced this for consoles. So presumably this is running on a PS5 or an Xbox if it is in fact running in real time. Now that brings up the main question that a lot of people have in mind, which is, is this even running in real time? Is this, is this something that we can expect to get in terms of quality when it comes to console and hopefully one day PC as well? But already, I mean, like we've said, we're talking like this game is scheduled for 2025, probably ends up being late 2025 by the time delays are factored in everything. Maybe early, but I'm going to go with late. Maybe. We'll see. They just, they've delayed everything they've released in the last like 15 years. So I think it's reasonable to think they'll delay this. But anyway, if we say late 2025, it usually takes about a year and a half to two years after the, the initial release of their games to get the PC port. So that puts us... Like 2026, 2027 for the PC port. So by the time we get the PC port of GTA 6, we're we're not even on the 50 series anymore. We're probably at that point in the 60 series. So just imagine what we'll be able to crank GTA 6 to look like at that point. I mean, it's it's madness, but 2026 uh, to 2027 is like the end of the PS5 and Series X generation. There's already rumors going around that Xbox is planning, and this was a leak from somebody within PlayStation apparently, but they're expecting Xbox's next big thing to be codenamed Xbox Next, and that it's expected to come out in 2026. And they aren't clear if that's like a mid-gen refresh, like a Series X Pro, or if that's just full on their next console. So it's possible, according to these rumors from PlayStation, PlayStation is expecting there's a very good possibility that Xbox starts the next generation a couple years early in 2026. Digital Foundry did a little breakdown of the trailer uh, for GTA 6, including the main question of, is the trailer real time? Which to me is, I think, the most pressing question. Let's hear their thoughts real quick on this question. So the first question is, is all this actually real time, Alex? Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess I should say my my perspective. I say yes because I can't think of a time when they um, have done a trailer in the last however many years that was not running in real time. Red Dead's trailers were all real time. Everything you saw in those trailers was in the game. And it's actually led to some interesting things where like <laughs> we had this in, I think it was our Red Dead 2, maybe it was the critique or it was one of the videos we did on like the open world or something. But I made a video where I showed a little clip 
of Dutch in a cutscene. Okay, he was, it was just a clip of a cutscene, nothing that fancy. That clip was used in a trailer, and because it was used in the trailer and the trailer used real game footage, it was copyright struck. My whole video, because it matched the Rockstar trailer that they had put out and they copyright struck the whole video. And that had, I mean, it's because it's Rockstar and they copyright strike their own trailers, which is rare, but it's Rockstar, so <laughs> can't do nothing about it. But that's a great example of them using actual in-game footage, so much so that when you played real game footage in your YouTube video, you could be copyright struck, which is just funny. There was another leak for GTA 6, apparently release of September 25th. The leak was from a janitor. <laughs> it was from a janitor. Oh, that's funny. That's why. How did he find out? It's a. I mean, it's pretty far out. If you're saying that, like, it's leaked. This guy's leaking that it's coming out September 25th, 2025. Maybe. I mean, I think it's so early. They probably don't even have a clear idea. They'll probably settle on a release date later next year. But they'll have a pretty good idea if it's going to be spring or fall. Probably by this summer, I would guess. Yes. So uh, I'm going to say that for like 80% of the trailer, it looks suitably easily done in real time on the current gen consoles and the reason for that is uh there's there's like a like a certain level of this and i think oliver went through this you described this after you watch the trailer and then you watch it again and you start realizing things well like the first time you watch the trailer like the first giveaway that it is real time is like just break up in the oh, yeah. and it's usually mm -hmm. seen around hair in the trailer and that's always hair is obviously really hard to render it's detail that's smaller than a pick yeah so like this little noise effect that you're seeing on the hair on these little strands that's something if you're going to pre-render something you just set the frame to to render over however much time it needs and you won't get that artifacting but when it's running in real time you're going to see that type of thing so i agree pixel and it has aliasing in it and it, when the characters move in the trailer there's a variety of scenes where characters turn around those like uh uh characters with longer hair for example you can see it really easily uh, you can sometimes see it in like eyelashes and things like that. It's just like general breakup of image quality. Um, and then like there's the second layer where you go back and you watch again. You're like, wait a minute. I mean, it is a 4K 30 video on YouTube and YouTube, mm. you know, has issues. It's not perfect. But there are some shots in the trailer. Like there's a shot where the camera swoops over those bridges that connects Florida to the uh, I think it's the Florida Keys. Uh, those really long bridges. Uh, eh. Weren't they in the movie True Lies? Am I am I mixing up movies? Oh, Alex, they're right also now? in real life. I just want to tell you. They're also in real life, but it was also <laughs> part of the James Cameron Cinematic Universe. Oh, yeah. And um, that shot there, I just looked at it. I was like, this doesn't look 4K to me. No. And then I then I thought about GTA V, and I remember when we covered that, I covered the initial thing of it, adding shadows, and the Oliver covered it again when they added ray trace reflections. Yep. And it seems like they're doing like internal res and then FSR, right? one up to native uh, it, up to it, output or something like that it definitely did have that fsr one look weirdly enough it may not actually be fsr one it could just be some sort of contrast adaptive sharpening with right basic mm -hmm. bilinear exactly. you know upscale right yes basic bilinear upscales yes i was i was gonna say the same thing that's uh uh the bilinear upscale uh, which, which would is, look similar. Which would look pretty similar anyway. It's just a <laughs> which would look similar. So, so, so the thing is, like, the trailer doesn't have, like, that perf pixel. No. Yeah, I mean, I I wasn't clear if this was because it was actually rendering at 4K or if this was because they were doing, like, the, the kind of cinematic thing where you just slap a bunch of filters on it, tons of motion blur, and then some noise effects on it, which they've done before with, with some games. But it's definitely not, like, this shot is not, like straight sharp 4k um pretty clearly but it does make you wonder like okay so if this thing is rendering at like 1080 or 1440p and then it's fsr scaled up i for one can't stand fsr one i can't i i struggle to tolerate fsr2 it's better but not very good it just doesn't even approach what dlss is able to do i hear fsr3 is supposed to be a lot better and so by the time this actually comes out it'll probably be rocking fsr3 and then we also are expecting the ps5 pro which comes out next year in the fall we're expecting that to bring a lot of like fancy upscaling tech with it so that will probably help it out but if this is going to be running on base ps5 and base like series x and s this is something that's probably going to rely a lot on upscaling 
And that worries me because the upscaling available on these consoles is nowhere near as good as the upscaling available on like PC. And to handle, uh, like to, to focus on that is concerning to me. <laughs> like to, to uh, depend so much on upscaling to hit resolution and frame rate targets, that worries me. Because every time we've seen that with other games where they rely on upscaling to hit frame rate targets, there's always a lot of spots where it starts to struggle to maintain that performance just because it's, it's, it's like having a lead weight and then dropping that lead weight the size of a minivan into the ocean. And then you just fill up a bunch of like pool noodles and uh, inflatable pizzas and stuff. And that's keeping it afloat a little bit. But if one of them pops, if there's any disturbance, any problem at all, the thing sinks to the bottom of the ocean. No issue. Like all of a sudden it's when there's a failure, it crashes hard. So if anybody could figure it out, it's Rockstar because they're Rockstar freaking games and they know what they're doing. But I don't like to hear that they're already looking like they're depending a lot on FSR and, and upscaling stuff, which is a bummer. Um, can current consoles really not handle native 4K? Not really, Ethan. I think the 4K thing has a lot of people misunderstand it. Like The only way you can really render high settings or ultra settings at native 4K is with like a 4090, is with like a $1,500 graphics card. That's what it actually takes to run it at that resolution on like high settings for modern titles. Um, of course, that's like approaching, if we're talking about cyberpunk, you know, that's what I'm referring to. It's really graphically impressive modern titles. I think the PS4 Pro and uh, One X, yeah, One X is what it was called. That one, I think, confused a lot of people because they did a checkerboarded thing where they were doing some techniques to get it to 4k but it wasn't really 4k it just like was a slightly better version of 1080p stretched across the screen or like 1440p stretched across the screen and stuff like that so like i, I think people misunderstood or thought that well we've had 4k for like five six years right and it's like no we had fake 4k for a handful of years three years ago we got some consoles that are more powerful but people have been demanding 60 fps in their games so They've been relying on upscaling to hit those frame rate targets. And then even then, like Spider-Man 2 on performance mode is not hitting 4K. Um, I think even the verbiage with a lot of these games is targeting nat native 4K. They still allow for you to go in and like if they need to drop the resolution to hit a frame rate target, they can do that. Drop it a little bit, maybe 10% or 30% to hit the target. And so there's really variable quality with these games all the time. And I think these shots are a great example. Some shots look fantastically sharp and others are a little bit more blurry and lacking detail. Um, and they can kind of mask it a little bit with some like, you know, motion blur, which smooths things out anyway. So you can't really tell what's motion blur and what's a lack of sharpness. And so there's some trickery like that that they can pull, but I can see why they are saying that it seems that they're relying a lot on FSR already. No, pristine 4K doesn't. look to it. It looks sub native 4K. And obviously 4K is incredible. Sub resolutions can also still look good. The trailer still looks good in spite of that. Mm -hmm. But then there's the, the, this like tertiary layer. You go deeper, you stop the, you stop the camera, you start counting pixels. <laughs> uh, there's a uh -oh. shot here when this woman turns around this is the most pathetic pixel count I've probably done at Digital Foundry, uh, where she turns around and on the lace of her top, you can see a seven out of 10 stair step, which or 6.5 uh, stair step out of 10, which implies around 40, 40p. But then at the end of the trailer, there is a really great shot of the two presumably main characters in this game. I assume so, so yeah. Whatever. <laughs> um, and they uh, bust down the door to this gas station convenience store whatever and uh on the very top as they go through the door you can see that there's actually a very obvious pixel you know stair step there and if you count that it's a long one it's 40 pixels i'd counted a 40 pixels thing count there sample and it's 26 out of 40 which is a little below 1440p could be 27 mm -hmm. it could be you know mm -hmm. like actually be real 1440p since the it's so imprecise there the, the number I gave, but it's like sub native, sub 4K, 1440p. Target seems to be 30 FPS based upon the trailer. So if they're shooting for 30 frames, which seems to be what they're they're focusing on. I mean, I saw some people online were freaking out because they're like, oh my God, it's 2023. Whoops, I hit forward. It's 2023 and they are, they're showing like a focus on 30 FPS. What is this madness? This is crazy. 
like I, I don't think that 30 FPS a bad game makes. I think there are great games. I would argue the best games ever made are almost all 30 FPS at launch. However, a lot of people have been a little befuddled that they seem to be targeting 30 FPS in 2023. But I think it just shows that Rockstar is prioritizing fidelity above performance. And maybe they'll add a performance mode or anything. But here's the deal. If they're having to target 1440p to hit 30, just imagine what they'd have to target to hit 60. What do they have to separate and, and shed in terms of fidelity to hit 60? Like this shows you the difference. A 1080p frame is the green. That's how much is actually being rendered. 1440p is the orange. 4K involves rendering all of this extra stuff that you didn't have to render for 1440p. This is why when people are like, Oh, just if you can hit 1440p, it just takes a little bit of polish to hit 4K. No, look how much extra surface area, how many extra pixels are involved. I mean, it's not even, it's not even close. Like it's ridiculous. Okay. I could pull out a calculator and just calculate the difference in pixels, but I really want to add it. It doesn't matter. I'll we'll rely on the visuals. I was like, I could calculate the surface area and show you the percentage difference, how much percentage area more is 4K versus 1440p. But I think the visual does the job. Okay, we'll keep it lean and I won't get too distracted. If they're having to go to orange to hit 30 FPS, to hit 60, they might have to drop down to 1080p, which means the actual final presented resolution would be at like 1440p. Maybe the way they do it, and this is more what I think, what I think the, the expectation should be is that people are able to do performance mode on the like pro versions of consoles. So like the PS5 Pro being able to do performance mode. And then on the regular PS5, it can only do the regular mode. It just doesn't have the option. I think that that's what they do. And for people that are like, that's so crazy. Why would they do that? I th I'm pretty sure that's exactly what they did with the PS4 Pro when that launched. They had versions of the game that launched on both platforms on the PS4 and the PS4 Pro, but the PS4 Pro had extra options available in terms of performance setting that you could select from, whereas the base PS4 just had the one. So I wouldn't think that that's that out like that far out um, of a realm of possibility. So I think that that is very doable. And also this is just really funny and I'll just show this because <laughs> I've heard people saying that, well, the PS4, uh, the PS5 is actually able to output 8K because on the box for the PS5, it says the 8K thing. It has a little 8K tag on it. People are like, so probably later in this generation, we get some 8K games. No, <laughs> no, uh, that's not what's going to happen. It's like 1440p, if you remember, like it's about like this, about like this. Okay, that's about 1440p. That's what GTA 6 is seemingly targeting to hit 30 FPS. 8K? is this whole freaking frame, <laughs> okay? It's not happening. Not to mention that 8K with the human eye, the, the distance and the size of the screen, there's math you can do where uh, I used to do it in home theater sales when I was selling big TVs and projectors all the time. There's a certain distance you have to be away from the display for you to no longer see the pixel makeup of it with assumed perfect 2020 vision. Um, well, it's not necessarily perfect, but with 2020 vision, there's a certain distance at which your eye won't be able to see individual pixels at like 4k on like a 75 inch screen. You can sit six, seven, eight feet away and you're fine. You're not going to see individual pixels, right? Um, as the screen gets bigger, the individual pixels will get bigger if the resolution stays the same, right? Cause you're just stretching it over a larger area. So if you take a 4k screen and you stretch that to a hundred inches, you're going to be able to see the pixels at like five, six feet because it's stretched so huge, right? Um, that's why like in my theater room, we have the big 110 inch projector screen. It's like a laser projector thing, but you can actually see the pixels within a few feet of the screen. The nice thing is nobody's sitting right here in front of a projector or in front of your big home theater. You're probably sitting on a couch like all the way back here chilling, having a great time. And you can't see anything because you're far enough away that you can't actually distinguish it. And that's where like 8K comes in, where 8K allows you to go a lot bigger and sit closer before you start to see the pixel difference. But the problem is that your field of view as a human being with two eyeballs and a skull, you can't actually take in everything that's around you with 8K. So it's not really that useful. Like it, it just isn't. I think color vibrancy, like support for HDR 10, um, 
higher lumen count, I, I think stuff like that, higher refresh rates, certainly lower response times, that's way more impactful for the viewer experience than 8K. If you wanna buy an 8K TV, you can do that. I think your money's much better spent on like a laser projector personally um, as somebody that used to work in that industry, but <laughs> I'll just tell you what. And as for people saying that uh, 1440p is 2K, it's not technically correct. Even what we would commonly refer to as 4K, which is 3840 by 2160, that's actually called UHD. It's not actually 4K. 4K is 4096 by 2160. It's like there, there's a different scale for these, which is why you have to ask if like, ultra ultra hd so like 8k uhd is a different aspect ratio than true 8k or 4k or 2k so 2k is actually just 1080p but a little wider that's actual 2k but a lot of people colloquially will call 1440p 2k even though it's not so it's just it's all pedantics i'll shut up um moving on <laughs> moving on uh these all seem very realistic to me so i'd I say agree. like a lot of the trailer actually looks suitably real time well you say a lot but i think everyone oliver you also noticed as well is that the uh there's those scenes where they sort of simulate the the phone where it's the vertical video mm -hmm. kind of tick tocky style presentation which actually fits really mm -hmm. well with where gta would presumably go it's been 10 years since gta 5 and it's interesting yeah. to see them integrate what has become cultural norms into the game but uh those may not have been real time you guys think Oliver. Yeah. 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 I mean, these, I, I was trying to think of this as like a sequence in the game. Cause I think you'll probably see this stuff happen in the game, probably during a montage or a sequence when like one of the characters is like, okay, Florida or not Florida vice city keeps getting crazier and crazier. And then they play a bunch of these clips of just crazy stuff happening in vice city. And you got to think like, if this were running in real time, the engine would have to build out this scene loaded into memory be sitting on it, ready for it to play out. They, they it takes place like and then have this scene loaded in, immediately cut to it without skipping a frame or a beat and then have it happen in smooth motion, everything. Like it just wouldn't be very practical when you can just render this sequence ahead of time and then just play it like a, a video. So this particular sequence, I think probably looks like this in game. It's probably captured from in game, but yeah, I, I would not buy that this is running like natively or anything i think that this is more just uh an artifact of how they're trying to get it set up because you guys remember that opening sequence in cyberpunk 2077 when they're doing the montage and they run it in real time but getting that thing running in real time took them like six months of patches to get working right because it's just so much data to load in quickly and swap in and out you know it's just a lot and just they could just be those. heavily post-processed though yeah that's true they they kind of blur them intentionally if you pro apply a nice gaussian blur and some you know uh mm -hmm. chromatic aberration to it it can look kind of rendered but yeah i i think it also due to the way the the motion blur looked it reminded me a lot of you know like those sequences in uh cyberpunk where they have like the the news cameras on like playing on like oh you know, like yeah in the yeah, background yeah, yeah. on like televisions and they show little snippets of the world there it reminded me of the quality of that where like good call, good like call. If, you, if you render out a, if you render out a video of a game like an unreal engine you can have like perfect like motion blur sampling and all these things. Right, That's what right, it reminded right. me of. But okay, so yeah. the thing here is is that this all seems very realistic. Uh, image quality isn't great and it's only 30 frames per second, which on paper, that doesn't sound great. But the reason that that's actually good news is because everything else that's going on here is pretty intense. Uh, one of the first features <laughs> the that's statement of the right century. away in the trailer <laughs> is that it does seem like they could actually be using proper ray traced global illumination. It could also be SSGI to some degree, but with the with the precision that you see in some of these scenes, I think it might be RTGI. Uh, right away, mm -hmm. there's that scene where it shows the main character in prison, the sunlight's pouring through the window, and the way it reflects off the different wall surfaces on, and the way her orange jumpsuit kind of reflects back on her face and how the lighting shifts, that's the kind of thing that wouldn't really be feasible with the more traditional uh, non-RTGI style solutions. Uh, and Oliver, you were digging into this as well and found things like at the strip club. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, like at 29. I mean, I think... <laughs> this is the great thing about video games though is that at the end of the day it's kind of your gut is going to dictate whether this is 
like visually satisfying to you or not. Like it's one of those things where we can, we can talk about stats all day long. We can be like, Oh, well, what's the resolution? Oh, what, what uh, technology are you using for upscaling? Oh, you're using FSR one. Oh, you should have used FSR three plebeian. Like we can do all that crap. It doesn't matter if people play the game and they think it looks good. That's all that matters. Like, that's all that matters. I think that this is an example, though, of one of those situations where a lot of these gimmicks and like marketing terms and jargon doesn't really matter as long as it looks good. Like for the last handful of years, everything's been about like ray tracing and everything's about DLSS upscaling to this resolution or frame generation or this or that. None of it really matters to players as long as the game looks good and runs well. Like that's really all you need. There are some types of people that do love just min-maxing their frame rates. One of my good college friends, he's known for, like if we were gonna play a game together, he will load in and like spend half an hour tweaking settings, restarting the game, change this setting. Oh, got to restart. Okay, restart that. And then like he'll mess with it for half an hour before even starting to play because he likes to min max his frames based on what it looks like to how it performs. Some people are like that. Um, I would argue probably most people, especially when you factor in the console market, they just want to play the game and for it to work. <laughs> like They just want to play it. It works. It looks good. They're happy. Easy peasy. We're lemon squeezy. Like Red Dead 2 looks amazing, plays amazing, but there are many things lacking about it. To this day, as far as I'm aware, I was just messing with it the other day when I restarted a run of it. It still does not have like actual true HDR support. It has like a really weird warped HDR that is like, it basically puts over a contrast filter and then tries to crank brightness up, but it doesn't actually do it accurately. Like, and this is a well-documented thing to be clear. I'm not like breaking a news story. This has been talked about since it came out on, uh, on PS5 and you know, the, the next gen versions became available, but it's lacking in that department, but it still looks amazing and nobody cares. I just turn off HDR. It's one of those rare cases where I think not playing with HDR actually looks better. Um, because the, the color balancing is actually way better. But I, I mean, that's the great thing with all this is at the end of the day, the consumer decides what works and what doesn't. And if they like the look of it, they're happy. They're happy. Digital movies aren't even shooting at 8K. Yeah, the only reason I think you'd shoot at 8K with like a Red Epic or something is if, I don't even know if Red Epics can do 8K, but the only reason you would do that is so that you can do like post-processing image stabilization and then after the image is stabilized, you can add in manual camera shake or other effects and stuff. Cause basically it would mean that you could take this frame right here, crop off a quarter of it. So like here, uh, to, to there, look at that, this whole corner, I can't, like this, all this would be a 4k image. So if you want to just crop it right into a corner of the frame, it's still full 4k. It gives you so much freedom for editing, for tweaking stuff. Like it, it's amazing for that. But in terms of actually publishing something in 8K, it just doesn't really make sense. Zach, Zach, Zaku. Thank you for resub in two months, baby. Looks great. Hopefully GTA 6 has a lot of offline single player content. I would guess so. I mean, they, um, they're, they're working their asses off and I'm, uh, maybe they launch multiplayer day one. I think that that would make I don't think they need to, honestly, they could, but I'm also anticipating the multiplayer launch to be an absolute disaster and a total train wreck. Tons of broken servers. Queue times will be ungodly. It's going to be a nightmare. But um, whenever they choose to do that, yeah. If I were them, I would probably wait like a couple weeks, maybe launch multiplayer a little bit after the fact, after people have finished the main story. Do that, but we'll see what they do. Subtle occlusion that really makes it look kind of RTGI-ish. And there's some overhead shots as well of the buildings in daytime where you see obvious bounce. It's very large scale, so that could be any number of things, but certainly it would be consistent with an RTGI presentation as well. Um, I, but I think the number one thing for me in terms of the RTGI is just that it's super consistent throughout. Yeah, like you don't is. see any issues with character models. You don't see any issues with dynamic objects. And I, I just think it's, it's really that overall consistency to the presentation, the way that it's all brought together, that really makes me think that they are doing some kind of RTGI solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. And it's the lighting in a way can remind me of uh, ray traced cyberpunk to some degree, not mm -hmm. path traced cyberpunk, but you know, it does, yeah, it right. does have some of those. Oh my God, dude, if they allow and support path tracing on this in 2027 or whenever we have the PC port, oh my God, dude, 
Oh, that'd be amazing. But yeah. man, just listening to us describe this, talking about like, yeah, it's 29 seconds in the strip club, you look in the foot. <laughs> like, I feel like we've almost become a parody of ourselves. And like, I know. Like I immediately doing... thought I was like, I was like, that's why I said like that most pathetic pixel count I've done. This, in my this really life. is. We. This is. Uh, this could be a parody video ooh, of digital family yeah. with the way we're talking. Did you guys about look it. at the six pixels on the side of yeah. the person's head at 16 seconds? Um, Did you I see also, the hair on but, Florida man's back? So good looking. Um, did you? But the one thing I'm actually curious about with RTGI is obviously there's limitations just in general, like of how you would get these things running in real time. There's a lot of aspects. The other aspects we'll talk about the trailer later. But like in the distance, like you can have RTGI close to the camera in a lot of games. And like if you go back to that Matrix demo, I think they extended it to like like a couple, like 150 to 200 meters out you know, like into the camera distance here but there's a couple mm -hmm. shots in the trailer where you can see even at like a pretty far range there's evidence of like large scale occlusion from sky lighting and also large scale bounce lighting from i think that's the biggest thing that's most impressive about these wide sweeping shots is just that even like normally in game trailers you look off in the distance and you can see the the weaknesses like you can and it's why normally trailers don't do these huge broad sweeping shots even even cyberpunk i feel like didn't do a lot of these broad sweeping shots they did a lot of stuff really close up then you see a lot of the like <laughs> fake segments that didn't end up in the game um and I think they don't do that specifically because in these wide sweeping shots where you can see really far from the distance, usually you can start to pull out things that don't look that great. <laughs> like the woman who's pregnant with the American flag shorts. Just notice that. Um, but you can look in the distance and start to see the weaknesses of it, which is why they usually keep the camera really close in. With GTA 6, they're just like, nope, look at all this. This is amazing. Even when you look off in the distance and you're trying to be like a pedantic prick and find stuff to like complain about, you can't find it. Like, oh, wow, the buildings look really good. Stupid rock star. <laughs> like, what, what are you, like, what, what are you going to pull from here? Part of it is that they do this really, really high quality, like, uh, it's like a, a bloom mixed with a fog, mixed with a haze uh, for things off in the distance. But it's also really realistic, and it's done very smoothly throughout the whole frame. So it doesn't feel like an old Silent Hill sort of blur to, to cover up things off in the distance. And so it just looks really, really good all the way throughout, no matter where you look. And that's the thing that really just makes it stand out more than anything is that there's not a single point you can point to where it's like, oh, that looks like crap, but that's in the distance, so who cares? The whole frame looks great. From the sun. And there, I'm just curious to like see like if it's all RTGI or if it's a combination of systems. Uh, because, you know, you would it, expect them to have to you'd cut corners maybe somewhere. It so could very be well be. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I think my favorite shot for just pure, like, realism, though, has to be around 27 seconds when they're rolling through the neighborhood there with the blue sky and all the cars parked on the street. Like, oh, yeah. it's just extremely eye-catching. Mm -hmm. uh, and, man, it, if you actually kind of squint at it, it looks almost real. Like, it has a photoreal look to it. No. And just looking at all these cars, by the way, did you guys notice how good the car paint is in this? Like the the it way they simulate well the, the, the little speckles in the paint and the light sort of penetrating the clear coat. Yeah, no, it's crazy. And reflecting back, it's it's genuinely fantastic, uh, which was also true of Cyberpunk. Yeah, and even like this, you remember we we did that look at the, the Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League trailer that they dropped, and there were a lot of like really low poly meshes that were in camera view and all sorts of stuff. And it's like, okay, it's, it's uh, you know, a, a trailer quickly. You're swinging through the air, so maybe you're not supposed to look at it, and that's why they do it. But in this case, like even when you pause, it still just looks very, very, very good. Very good. It's just crazy. I would say... So, yeah, Cyberpunk's another game with great looking cars. But uh, there's also evidence that there might be more to this than just RTGI and that there seems to be evidence of ray traced Some sort of demonic sacrifice to make the game look so good. Yeah, just look at the rays bouncing off of his butt crack and then inside the crack bouncing all the way down. The color accuracy is crazy reflections in many scenes possibly with ssr mixed in because if you look closely you will see some disocclusion artifacts here and there but by and large there are reflections in scenes that wouldn't necessarily be feasible with just screen space or cube maps uh 
Although, you know, technically things like rear view mirrors, which if you look in some of these scenes, you'll see like rear view mirrors, they could always do a render to texture or something like that, like right. a driving game. But, mm-hmm. you know, if if they're doing That'd this for everything else, be it doesn't expensive. <laughs> it would be very, yeah. it would be very expensive and stupid in an open world game, I think, especially when there's so <laughs> many just other... have this one little mirror re-rendering <laughs> yeah. the entire yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, so, so That'd be dumb. I think based yeah. on this, it's very likely we are also looking at ray traced reflections, Alex. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Oliver pointed out a couple of these to me too, too. Because like one thing is when you're looking for ray traced effects in a trailer, a lot of the camera angles can be extremely flattering to screen space effects oh, yeah. and or other techniques. So that's why you have to look for things that you just know are not possible with the other techniques. Oliver had a really good uh, point, for example, that there's that one side mirror on the car where you can definitely see off screen a car moving in it. Yeah. Like it's like a white car moving by in it. Which, to be clear, if you're doing screen space, doesn't work because there's nothing on the screen <laughs> to match this. So it has to be ray traced. Or like what they were saying when they said render to texture, what that means is like if you... Maybe a good example would be like... Uh, you guys remember Mafia 3? I think it was Mafia 3 that did this. So like this this is render to texture. So like if what they basically do is they set up an invisible camera right here. And then they render everything behind you and then project it up on the screen uh, as basically a texture. And there's still limitations. Like it's not rendering at max quality. Of course, it's rendering at lower quality. There's things in the distance that are cold out. So you can't see infinitely behind you, but it's a way that you can see a rear view mirror look and you see immediately things get spawned out because it, it doesn't have a very full or very long um, draw distance. But this type of thing like doesn't look super great. And it's also what they said was very expensive. And when they refer to very expensive, what they mean is that it, like normally in an open world game like this, or really any game, let's see, a, a great demonstration of this was I think Horizon Zero Dawn. So like this is how the game normally is rendering stuff. So you have the player character here and this is the field of view. And as you look through the map or around the map, things are spawned in and out and effectively rendered in these little bitty chunks and then when they're off camera they're kind of dropped so that you don't have to worry about it right like it's still there in the game's memory so if you turn the camera view quickly it can render it but it's not actively like in the rendering pipeline basically but the moment that you do the rear view mirror and the render to texture you're now also putting a field of view behind this camera on the opposite side. And so all of that stuff behind you, at least to a certain distance has to be included, right? So it's not, no, I'm not saying this is rendered to texture. What we're referring to is specifically field of view, how that affects what is being put into uh, the rendering pipeline. So when you do something like render to texture and you have another camera angle, oh, I just closed the tab, that's what it was. And you put another camera angle behind you, you're widening all the stuff that has to be included during every single given frame. Whereas previously, like if you're just focusing this way, this stuff can be culled out because it's not being included. But when you include this, they have to include those things still. Again, at least for a little bitty distance before they fog it out and then it disappears and despawns. So it's just expensive. But these types of things that they're doing here, you couldn't do with screen space reflections. Um, You could do it with like some other fancier stuff, but it would be very, very like needlessly complicated. And in the age of ray traced reflections, this just makes sense. That's something that you really, realistically, you wouldn't do a rendered texture there. That'd be such a waste. That well, RT is much more elegant uh, for that. At 52 seconds specifically, that's we also see. <laughs> there. I just love that we're doing that. <laughs> at 52 seconds, the guy grabbing his crotch with the gator shirt, and the big American flag hat. It's just, <laughs> oh, I'm so ready for GTA 6. I love it already. <laughs> <laughs> There's the man dancing in the street, and it is just like the cell phone footage, but you see that tow truck looking thing drive by, and you can see yes. it properly reflected beneath his legs where he's doing the crotch grab. Yeah. <sighs> and, yeah. Uh, you know, the very- way we're talking about this, Jesus. <laughs> Zoom in on it. <laughs> what are we doing? Look at the reflection of the crotch grab. There's also uh, a naked man jogging, I think. Oh. <laughs> I also love how hoppy he is. Like, I don't think that's getting enough credit. Like, this guy is like, popping around jogging like it, this is not a, a typical jog this guy's got some energy he's probably high on something usually got to hit the strip club to see jiggle like that for real <laughs> Jesus. 
I'm so ready for this, dude. It's going to be crazy. Um, <laughs> wow. Oh, love it. It's your gas station. And just for yes. one frame at the end of it, you can see that the a white truck is blocking off his body. Oh, this is great. There's still the reflection mm. underneath the truck, so that's, that's also indicative. That's a great catch. But also elsewhere, we do see, curiously, what look like screen space artifacts. So maybe it's being mm. layered in or on some surfaces, like maybe larger bodies of water. Maybe they actually don't use ray tracing. It's not totally clear, right, John? Yeah, that's right. Like, for instance, one of the things that stood out was the the flamingos. I think it's at around 20 seconds. If you look closely at the water, there are some evidence of SSR sort of artifacts, right. disocclusion artifacts that you would get. It's hard to say because of how quickly cut this trailer yeah this is. is like the little white blur uh, but in the water my best guess is that they are doing some form of rt reflection and also overlaying ssr which is kind of pretty standard i think uh, because it you is. do get a little bit more precision and also typically you know things like particle effects alpha effects things like that those don't easily trace into ray traced reflections obviously mm -hmm. uh so you would want ssr to layer that into the scene so that everything's more consistent uh, and that, I think that works pretty well because as long as they line up quite smoothly, it's not that distracting versus SSR by itself or SSR layered on a cube map where they don't align oh, yeah, at all. Geez. And then when it disoccludes, <laughs> it's just like, oh, it's a huge gap. It looks terrible. Uh, I think it's an open world good. game where you couldn't possibly have the cube maps everywhere you want them to be. No, so, you would yeah. have to use a, a lot of generic cube maps. I mean, you could do like, I mean, Insomniac's original Spider-Man did okay enough with that. They use a ton of cube maps, but even then, obviously, very approximate. And and the moment you started really looking at it, they started to look really bad. Very limited, and that's why they moved yeah. away from mm -hmm. it. If you go back to GTA Five, actually, in December of last year, they added in RT reflections to that game. Right. Uh, on consoles, of course, not on PC, Alex. But only that's on stupid. consoles. Oh, that's, that's really that's frustrating. Uh, but <laughs> that, that game combined uh, real-time cube maps captured from the player location with RT reflections out to a very limited distance. So the problem there is you get that discontinuity oh, that's right, when you're combining yeah, those two right? elements. Didn't look very good. Now here with this uh, more ray tracing centric solution that's probably not relying on that fallback, you're going to have really great reflections across the entire environment it looks like. And uh, it's, That'd it's be just... Great. Yeah, it's just especially for like distant buildings and stuff like that. Just like we saw in Spider Man, having perspective correct reflections that are detailed all throughout the environment makes such a big difference in like a cityscape with big glass towers, right? Right. Just yeah. The cohesiveness. That's, that's a good point. That's a good point. Like this game is not ready. Well, especially in in Spider Man, like you're in a massive metropolitan city with glass everywhere. So having nice ray traced reflections is is like a godsend it looks so good redemption a lot of people always point back to red dead redemption like this looks better than x game that released today but a lot of that is also just the artistic environment in that game it's like a lot of diffuse materials rolling hills not a lot of like huge occluding buildings and structures and that's where lighting gets super complex yep and mm -hmm. that's where traditional techniques fail the hardest and one thing i also heard somebody say about red dead that actually made a lot of sense is and you'll have to forgive me i can't remember i think it was on like twitter i saw it in like a thread somebody posted I think they were game dev, but who knows? But basically what they had said, and it made sense to me, was that one of the other benefits is that they can afford to have higher quality like meshes and textures and things loaded in because in Red Dead, the player speed is very low. Like you're not zipping around in a Ferrari or a Lambo in Red Dead. Like you're, you're riding on a horse most of the time, you know, you might hop on the train occasionally or in a boat and paddle your way across a lake, but they don't really have to worry about quickly streaming in a ton of stuff very quickly and loading out the old stuff and getting in the new stuff. They don't really have to worry about that. They just like load in the immediate area and then in the distance, they can have the lower poly meshes and stuff and they, they fade them in when they need to, but they don't have to stress too much about it because the player speed is so low that they basically have bought themselves plenty of time for those transitions and for unloading and, and loading in. And I thought that that made a lot of sense. Yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a, lot, a really great looking game, but it also it has like a lot of aspects of it that make old school rendering work better with it than definitely would work with GTA 6. Yeah, I mean, not to discount the work that went into that game because it is stunning no, not for sure. No. But yes, it, that type of naturalistic environment tends to work really well with more traditional rasterized techniques. 
glass metal buildings on this large scale and all these angles. This stuff is a nightmare and developers mm-hmm. have struggled with it for a long time. I would say CD Projekt Red was one of the first to really kind of solve it with its ray tracing work done on Cyberpunk 2077. So mm-hmm. I'm not surprised that Rockstar would want to take a similar approach and push it as far as they could. And it does seem to be what they're doing here for sure. So I like that a lot. Um, but then not everything does appear to be ray, ray traced. And you actually notice this right at the end of the trailer. I think Alex, it's the, uh, yeah. the it does seem to be using shadow maps basically. Yeah. And this is a little bit surprising. Well, not so given everything else in the trailer, yeah. if there's ray traced reflections, if there's RTGI, yeah, yeah. something's got to give, something's got to give, but like, yeah. yeah. So like, uh, Oliver uh, pointed out in the notes and really well in the trailer that there's a lot of shots like where you don't see some of the hallmarks of ray traced shadows that you'd expect, like the really nice, like tapered shadow where it starts off hard and gets a bit softer. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5 PC did that originally with like the soft shadow options the games have, Mm -hmm. Uh, but not to the same precision that you'd get from a ray traced effect, which is what GTA 5 on consoles eventually added covered in a video by us as well and here you just don't really kind of see that in the trailer and then there's a very specific example that john just mentioned right now at the end of the trailer you look at the top left corner as they open the door bam on the opaque uh door oh I yeah don't know, frame there you can see what is just odd. well that's it boys lock it up we're done the game sucks <laughs> yeah oh well it was fun while it lasted oh geez now th- this is like it is still a video game. I mean, and you have to also remember that like with all these trailers, everything is like everything is very intentional. There is nothing in these trailers that is accidental, that was not considered. And so when they choose to show one of these angles or to frame things a certain way, it's done to make it look the best it can. So in this case, it's a very cinematic shot, but they also, like they said, they very intentionally through the whole trailer, don't really show you a lot of angles where you're going to be seeing the ground as they're walking. So you can't see those shadows that might not look as good as the rest of the game that looks really amazing. Or maybe it's just a coincidence, but everything is very, very intentional. On the opaque uh, door, I don't know, frame there, you can see what is just obviously a shadow map alias. And once again... We're zooming into the corners of an image. <laughs> it makes yes, me... we are not a parody of Digital Foundry. Yeah. We are Digital This Foundry. is probably why I enjoyed the Blade Runner adventure game uh, from Westwood back <laughs> yeah. in the day, because you spent a lot of time zooming in on things just like in the movie, right. basically. I'm like, wait a minute. No wonder I like this game so much, because that's what we do here. <laughs> Zoom. Now, this Zoom. is this is like taking pixel Hats. peeping to a new level, but... What can I say? It is I will peep those pixels, John. I will peep those pixels. Uh, so, you know, shadows, not that exciting. It'll get the yeah. job done for sure. And I'm not surprised that they had to give, even though they did RT shadows on GTA 5, but uh, something they had to yeah. give, as you say. But I think one of the more uh, visually impressive features in this uh, is something that our hair care expert, Oliver here, who has a lot of experience <laughs> hair with care long expert. flowing locks, uh, <laughs> noticed it's the hair simulation. <laughs> Yeah, the hair good, sim, yeah. the hair sim just looks incredible. <laughs> Again, we're gonna have to go back to a shot that, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe is a little bit go. suspect. But at 38 <laughs> seconds, if you go to that shot, <laughs> the way that character's <sighs> hair moves here, it's flowing so unbelievably well, and it doesn't. There's no like invisible clipping. It's all moving and just like this. It is very 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 well simulated i mean there's like there is the little aliasing artifacts because i do think this is running in real time but um in terms of the simulation it is crazy crazy good crazy good and also this for whatever reason this one shot like dominated the discourse of the gta 6 for the first like week and a half everybody yeah even right now (laughs) pinkman it's lucia tons of people think that this is lucia Apparently, the the consensus now is that it's not Lucia because the moles on her like arms and back do not match, and the moles on her face didn't match. She's like, there's a couple that aren't matching, but then in another shot, the shot at the end of the trailer with her uh, in the bed doing trust, you know that. 
Apparently you can see more moles on her arm that don't match over here. So people are like, no, it's not her. I don't get why it matters. I don't really care. Like who gives a crap? Uh, maybe it's like people are concerned because they're like, oh, well actually you'll be able to dress up and go to parties or something like, okay, whatever. I don't care that much, but I don't know. <laughs> it's just funny. People <laughs> spent like weeks ma matching moles and then angle of nostrils and ears and stuff, trying to prove that this is her, or not her. Like, uh, why, why do we care? I just, <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. Really yeah. Made. Well, that's why like people are like, oh, the reason the moles don't match on the face is because she used makeup because she has makeup like lipstick and stuff. Okay. But why would you put makeup on your arms? Who are you? Chloe Kardashian? I don't think so. This manner. I think John likened it to truss effects, which I totally oh, yeah. agree with. Like it looks amazing. Now, if you look in, through this trailer, you'll see a lot of really great evidence of great hair physics throughout. This is the best example. You also see like some looks like dithering patterns on the hair. Like it's not, you know, the cleanest, but obviously yep, that's a hard, yep, yep. hard problem to solve. I mean, trust effects is kind of an old tech, I think, in more recent games. Oh, this is one we talked about in my initial like reaction thing to this. Yep. Hard problem to solve. Was uh, I mean, not effects. the crotch. This people were saying that, look, there's kids in the game. And now people are saying that, no, it's not kids. These are actually adults, but they are just sunk into the mud and that's why they look smaller. Maybe, I mean, to me, it's kind of hard to gauge based on the perspective and everything that we have. But to me, these figures do look smaller than the ones standing around them. Like even if you were to take them here, pull them out, like the, the characters just look smaller. Maybe it's just the angle is really weird. Maybe it's that, you know, they're sunk in the mud. So, you know, they're they're like, thigh deep basically in the in the mud and water so it, that kind of messes with the perspective even though they're like a few feet off in front and to the left of this guy it, it just changes the angle so maybe that's what it is maybe they're not actually kids and it just kind of plays with perspective a little bit i can't i can't really tell but to me i'm like this doesn't seem that far away from these guys and these guys seem way bigger than these little little fellers you know, you know what? We're going to do a poll. We're going to do a poll. One of the weirder polls we've done. I want to know what you guys think. If those, if those characters look like kids to you, it's also weird to have kids wrestling in a mud pit with a bunch of like half dressed adults. I'll give you that. So maybe we should hope that they're not kids. I don't know. It's just, it, it the perspective's weird. So I don't know. I don't know. It's an open question. Dare I say kind of an old tech i think in more recent games we have not seen this attempt to really model long flowing hair in this really uh great mm. way so this yeah, we, is really cool to see we've seen a lot of games shift to a strand based <clears throat> model that's extremely detailed and allows this like fine grain zoom without any visible artifacts really but mm -hmm. uh there hasn't been much of a focus on actually simulating the motion of hair which is yeah. kind of a different problem to solve i suppose uh, it is. It's really only been the FIFA games, but they have a like a limit to hair length, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. The re you know, the reason for a game like this, and it was in when they were doing Star Citizen presentations years ago, they mentioned that one of the things about you can get like one character in a scene with like strand based hair, and then you like, what about the other characters, right? Like one, yeah, you have to have yeah. the art to do that, and then two, you have to have the performance. So I'd be curious how they're doing it here. Uh, if it is like strand based, it doesn't look at. Uh, maybe it's no i i two. actually don't think it's it doesn't necessarily <clears throat> look strand based and i think that's why it's kind of artifacty yeah it's kind of did the read looking right it's, it has that but, dithered uh, out, like yeah yeah in, in scenes in this game you, you can say you <laughs> can see like just just tons of characters on screen it's not just like one character they all have and it like a and it does look very good across the board and again it's like i was saying earlier it's one of those where like pretty much no matter where you look it just looks really really good it does i do think there's a it's perhaps just the compression artifacts. There, there's some things. Some of the character's skin looks a little waxy. You know what I mean? Where like it, it just looks a little too smooth. Like his his uh, chest, like his skin just looks very waxy to me. But that could be part of that upscaling thing um, because you can see a real lack of sharpness along these edges. This to me screams like AI upscaling, like an FSR two or FSR one, like they were saying earlier. So that could be part of it. Cause even DLSS, if you go and drop the resolution too low, they end up looking kind of weirdly waxy and, and just not quite right. And here, I think it, it's kind of a similar look as well. So this could just be 
an artifact of that. And when the game comes out, if they can get it running at high resolutions, maybe that's no longer a concern um, and won't be a problem. But it is something that I did notice is that in large sequences like this, especially when you look off a little bit past the camera and it's not right up in front of the camera, a lot of the skin looks a little bit waxy. He's all oiled up. We're sweaty, yeah, but like it's not just the reflection. It's just that it's a very smooth color. Like it's just maybe it's maybe what I'm upset about. Maybe it's just because there's not enough body hair. You know, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. I, I need like more body hair. Maybe that's what I need. That might be it. Luke needs body hair confirmed. Liliquy. No, they all have this hair. This is nuts. So it's uh, really well done in spite of that dithered look and the sunburn uh, is a great yeah, touch really really cool oh here is a question he kind of looks like jeff bezos here's a question do you think sunburn is a mechanic in this game Ooh, i don't think so but it would be really fun if you're like shirtless and you run around uh outside and you end up getting sunburn it would be the most vice city miami thing ever if that was a mechanic like if you're out in the sun too long you turn red that would be really funny cool to see them push it further because you know red dead redemption 2 that's probably like one of the things that dates it the most is the like hair. the character rendering. Oh yeah. And the hair yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, so well, the beard looked okay in the game, but it didn't yeah. move or anything. Uh, one other really cool shot here is at 52 seconds, again, that green truck where you see this guy yeah, 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 with yeah, just with this awesome crazy like dreads and his hair is just going nuts in the wind. <laughs> and like, I can't remember the last time I saw that in a game, hair actually moving in a violent manner in the wind. And maybe yeah. from a different angle, it would look a little glitchy or not so great. But I think that's just so cool that Rockstar is willing to go out and say, yeah, we're going to have like really crazy Harrison in the wind. <laughs> Show you something yeah. cool. It's one of those things I'm kind of bummed about. Like I, going back to like uh, The Witcher 3, they have all those NVIDIA hair physics or hair sim, whatever stuff they called it. Hair FX, I think. And all that stuff is awesome, and I love it because the hair actually realistically moves and sways with you, and I, I think it's great. It seems like with the focus on ray tracing, with the focus on upscaling and all that, we've lost sight of some of those really cool features and gimmicks and stuff that they used to have in games, and we've just lost them, and they're no longer there. And this is one of those things where, like, I, don't, I would rather have really cool hair sim than hyper sharp like ray traced reflections and puddles. Like, I'm willing to make that trade because I think the hair sim would be uh, more noticeable and would be cooler and help with immersion more than those extra pixels in the reflection on the water personally. Like, um, I think that would be preferable, but we just don't really see it that much anymore. You haven't seen it. In a there's while, usually so like, awesome. there's usually some like restraints to prevent that. Like it can yeah. only go like so far horizontal or self intersections don't occur. So you want to have like it not move too much. It's a lot of good stuff here. That uh, that that shot, by the way, again, the green truck. That man, the paint on the truck there, right? First of all, you do have the RT reflection of the the mirror there in the truck door, which is cool. But like the paint mm -hmm. shader itself, look at that. That's like that's so good mm -hmm. looking. I mean, that looks yeah. better than some dedicated driving games, as you know. <laughs> yeah, it really does. As uh, we know. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, quite impressive, I gotta say. Actually, the material work there in general, like the way, like the the plastic rim to the door, uh, to the right of the window itself, like it looks suitably mm -hmm. plasticky, like what you'd expect in a car. Mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of impressed with the quality of the vehicle rendering in this trailer. And obviously, you're going to spend a lot of time doing vehicles. In vehicles. And we haven't seen Rockstar do vehicles since GTA V, right? So, this is, oh and that, my God. again... That's, I guess that's kind of the thing to, to remember here is that we've not, we don't know what Grand Theft Auto would have looked like on a PS4 or an Xbox One. Yeah, we just skipped like, it. <laughs> because the, the game we did get on there, that's a, that's a PS3 360 game, right? Mm -hmm. Like it has yeah. those enhancements, but that's, you know, this, this is actually something built for the new machines and we've not seen it for so long. So it's really crazy to see what they're doing here. I'd be... It is kind of cool though that like that we've reached a point where for Rockstar, they really are just like taking basically a generation <laughs> to, between games. And I, I think it actually works because it makes the games more exciting. When we actually do get those games, they are all the more impressive. They're all the crazier because the last time we saw them was a generation before or that type of game. It's why I think going between like Red Dead, which is Old West, uh, kind of very naturalistic versus 
the, the center of society and civilization in these huge cities with GTA, it works really, really well because you get effectively a generation skip between those entries. And so every time you see the next one, you're just blown away because it looks so much better than the last one. Whereas if they just did like GTA 7 on the PS6, it might not be that shockingly improved compared to going straight to like Red Dead 3 or whatever medieval game that they might be working on. That could be a massive leap over what we saw with like Red Dead 2 in 2018. So I think it's it's kind of cool. I think it's kind of cool. Um, we'll wrap up with this little tidbit. They're going to talk about whether they think it could hit 60, FPA, 60 FPS based on uh, their understanding. It seems like at 22 seconds, you do see like huge crowds, like 50 plus people in a given space, in a given frame of the camera. And that's just so intense. They have to wonder like, Maybe this is a bit of that vaunted current gen CPU power being put to good use because I don't know that we've seen really that big increase in scale uh, of simulation. But here it looks like maybe we're seeing that. And that could maybe also suggest that, hey, this might not be a, a 60 FPS experience either because this is really intense stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, if they're, if they're going to have lighting consistency throughout the world, just as an expectations management, like if they want to just art the game one time, people hate it when I use that verb, by the way. I always get comments on the videos like, don't use the art word the art game. as a verb, Alex. Uh, <laughs> but I will. Um, if they're going to art the game once, uh, then uh, they're going to not want to rely on different solutions. And the chance of them, you know, trying to reach 60 FPS with RTGI, we've seen this generation so far mm. that it, it <laughs> is almost a bridge too far for every single game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um almost like for almost every game yeah, it's pretty yeah, yeah. rare that it pants well so uh here yeah definitely 60 fps and i think if they want to really do push the op open world environment and a lot of stuff that the trailer just won't show here because it's not gameplay they're not going to show any sort of the like okay what are the new physics things what are the new animation things they've always kind of pushed these things with each gta version since i don't know four so these are all the things they don't show in the trailer. And that's those are other aspects that say like, okay, we need to use this new CPU, CPU power of this current generation of consoles. So I'd expect 30 FPS based on this trailer. Another yeah, thing I'm yeah, also yeah. kind of expecting on the trailer too is that weren't some of the original GTA 5 trailers, like a lot of the cinematic aspects from just the intro of the game, weren't uh, they? They were just like a lot of those vignettes uh, from the yeah. game's intro. Like on the beach and whatnot. Dude, look at that yeah, original I'm trailer. Right, I'm curious yeah. if this is a all resolution like though. Game stuff. So there's a lot actually that we're not seeing here. Still. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I'm um, also a little bit curious, like my my expectation is thirty FPS as well. For one, the trailer's in thirty FPS, and I think that that's pretty clear. Trailers almost always are created specifically to try and present the game as best as they possibly can. So if you're able to run 60 and achieve that quality, they're going to run it at 60 and release a 60 FPS trailer. Um, 30 FPS could be them playing it safe to play devil's advocate. Maybe they're just playing it safe and they'll announce 60 and it'll surprise everybody. But just like we saw with Starfield, they showed everything in 30. They only ever talked about 30. And there were a lot of fanboys that were like, no, they're going to announce 60 right before launch to really blow everybody away. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. But with with all this, I I think 30 FPS is the expectation. I think Rocksteady, Rocksteady, oh my God. Rockstar is under the expectation that, um, and perhaps properly so, that they can kind of do whatever the hell they want to do. And if they want to do 30 FPS, they're going to do it and everybody's going to suck it up and love it. And as I've said before, I think that in my view, the best games ever made, almost all of them, if not all of them, launched at 30 when they came out. So I don't see it as a, a huge problem. <laughs> Beat Connect, sorry. Um, so I don't see that as like a, a huge concern. I know some people are going to find it really disappointing because they've gotten accustomed to 60 FPS, but I don't think it's a, a huge issue for third person adventure games. Uh, first person, it's more of a concern because it makes me like really motion sick, but I don't think 30 is that offensive. I do think like the push for 60 with all these major games has spoiled us a lot, but it's also gotten us to the point where we've become accustomed to less than huge leaps forward in fidelity and scope as we've come into the next generation deeper and deeper. And, you know, like they, they can really crank the graphical fidelity in Spider-Man 2 in uh, fidelity mode. The game looks amazing. The upscaling is, is very minimal. And so the sand effects and everything look great. The reflections look amazing. But the thing is like, because 60 F 
FPS feels good, when that's an option, a lot of players will choose that and the game looks worse as a result. So I think it's probably good for them to focus on 30, make sure it runs like butter at 30, refine that experience. And when we get 60, whether that's a, a next gen patch on the PS6 or maybe it's on the PS5 Pro, if it's there or uh, maybe it, it only comes to PC, who knows? But when that comes, I'm sure we're all gonna buy it again. <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy the game all over again. But that's, you know, it's all part of the plan. It's all part of the plan. He took my thing.